Okay. So, I'm now recording. Interesting. Sorry about that. Anyway, so instead of getting straight into the game, he makes she makes us do certain routines. And the first day, I was so disappointed because we spent so much time doing those routines and it didn't get us into the game very quickly. So time was going and all that. And finally, when we got in the game, we're so exhausted. But what I literally found out was that those routines were very necessary to keep us actually, with, give us endurance when we actually started playing the actual game. And this is what you see every team does, even some footballers, before they start the game, you think that they have already trained and they have come to the, their pitch. Why do they have to do some, all of these things before they get into the game? It's important, okay? If you want to be successful, unless you want to be successful, don't do your warm-ups, don't do your routines, okay? And as an entrepreneur, you have, must have daily routines. Maybe you have to make um, calls every day. Maybe you have to do social media posts, update your WhatsApp status. Maybe you have to put something on your group page to motivate people. Tell you what, if you don't do those little, little things, your team will start dying, all right? And that is why it's important for you to keep to routines discipline yourself to be able to do those things all right and it will shock you that since we started this business we've been popping virgin as demonstration it's a routine we do at every present live presentation and that is what is keeping the excitement on it's funny it's level it's almost insignificant but i tell you it has so much impact and then you focus on doing productive activity and that's a less a, a discipline you must also um be able to have okay Focus on doing productive activity. There are so many things you can be doing that seems like you are working, but actually you are not being productive. Okay? Jim Rohn calls it major time and minor time. You must know the difference between major time and minor time. Major time is the things you are doing that actually helps produce results. The other things you do, like designing websites and all those other things, is nice, but after you've done them, the actual work is getting it in front of people getting people to see what you have, actually talking to prospect and all those things. Those are the major times, all right? So this is really important. And this is something also you need to learn. Number three, prospecting. Prospecting is one of the key skills that we need to learn. Now, what we need to learn about this art is that it is not a talent, it's a skill. A lot of people join this business and the, one of the things, excuses they give is that I don't know people. All my friends are not serious. Um, I don't know anybody who is interested in doing this business. The kind of people around me are not interested. Now, learn this from today. That prospecting is a skill, is not a talent. Nobody is born with that ability. You need to develop it. And once you know it's a skill, you know it's learnable. So instead of asking or saying that I can't do it, rather find out how can I do it. And hopefully by that question, you'll be able to find somebody who can teach you or will, will direct you in a direction which will help you now find the places where you can learn about those skills. So that is very, very important. Okay, And that applies to every skill that I'm talking about. They are all skills which are learnable. All right. So that is very important. I hope somebody will help me here. All right. So... Please mute yourself um, when you come on the call. All right. All right. So that is now. The other thing I'll say about prospecting is that start with your family and friends, but don't end there. It's very important that when you start this business new, of course, you have to start talking to the people you know. Because it's very important that the people you know at least know that you, are, you have an opportunity that they can be a part of. You don't want to start a business and somebody will now come and talk to you, maybe after months. Okay. You now have people, somebody come talk to your wife or your best friend. And then you find out later that your best friend was actually signed up by somebody else. You don't want that. So talk to the people you know first, but understand that those are not the people that actually might build the organization. You probably will learn this in the future. I mean, the top leaders in this business actually know this, that the people who actually build your business, you, are not, you have not probably even met them already. You have not met them yet. So it requires another skill, okay, which will help you 
build new contacts, help you meet new people and build new relationships with people because probably those people that you are now going to meet in the future, they are actually the ones that are going to be able to build your business, not the ones you already know. So start with family and friends, yes, but don't end there. So those of you who say, I've spoken to everybody I know and they all don't want to join, so that's the end of my business. That is a wrong mentality approaching this business, right? Like I said, it's a serious business, so you need to master the skills. All right, the fourth um, skill you need to master is inviting. Now the art of inviting um, and prospecting is very key if you want to build a large organization, especially when you are starting the business, okay? Especially when you are starting fresh. You need to master these two because that's what will kickstart your business. That's what will start making you some small monies that will get you excited, right? Now, if you do this wrong, you're gonna to talk to a lot of people, but you're actually not gonna be able to help them join the business. And so this is an art, it's a skill. The people who are doing it and succeeding, they are doing it in a certain way. The fact that it's inviting, it's not just like a wedding invitation where people know they are coming to eat or whatever, so when you just send them a card, they will come. It's not like that. This requires something more for you to be able to get them to actually be interested to watch or listen to whatever. So in inviting, your role is to be a signpost not to be the source of the information. You are just pointing them in the direction or to the place or person where they can get more information about the business opportunity or the products. You don't have to be the one telling them everything. There's a problem with that, okay? So you have to learn to master the art of inviting, right? And there are so many places you can invite people to, okay? For example, and I'm sure you can add to the list, okay? You can invite people to, of course, live presentations. You can invite people to um, online, like we are doing Zoom presentations. You can invite people to three-way calls with your upline leader, okay? That is, if you don't know, so you can do that. You can call your upline, you can call the person, and the three of you will be on a conference call, and you allow your upline leader to actually give the person the information. You don't do it yourself. So you just do the invitation or make the appointment or do the arrangement and then let it happen. And there's power in that because that is actually what leads to the signups. Okay? Make up in numbers what you lack in skills. So especially for the starters, those of you on the call who are probably just starting new, you don't want to be the ones, I always tell my, my new members, even if you seem to be an experienced network marketer, one of the things I tell people is that don't do the presentations, don't start doing the presentation yourself. Learn how to do the presentation, but don't start by doing the presentation yourself to your own prospects. Just point them to somebody experience, more experienced in the business who can do that for you. Because if you do it that way, you're gonna see more success very early. But if you try to be the source of the information, technically, you probably are so new, you have you know, you don't have the success stories to back up what you are saying. Your confidence level may not be that high. You may be, you know, fumbling and they will see through you and they will not be convinced. But if you refer to somebody else who is more experienced, they come with an energy, they come with some passion, they come with some excitement. They, they have seen it, they are doing it, they are making it. And so when they talk, there's some energy with what they say that brings the conviction. Okay, so always use a third party if you can. And especially for the beginners, always use a third party is very, very powerful, all right? Now, third and fifth skill is presenting. Presenting, and there's an art to presenting, okay? Now, there's a difference between presenting in corporate organization or when in the corporate field, and then how we present in network marketing. Because what we do in network marketing is more about persuasion, okay? bringing something to the room that actually gets people's people to sign up now remember when you are the presenter you are responsible for the people who are in that room and normally other people have brought them so there's an expectation that you have to be able to get those people to the level where they can actually see the big picture and so it's not just about being able to talk or read the slides it's not just to be able to um you know, just, you know, say as, as it is. There's a lot more um, 
nonverbal communication that goes on when there's a presentation. And you have to be able to master that art of doing it. Okay. You must know your audience. You must be able to carry a presence and an energy and a fire that's able to bring conviction in the room. All right. And this is really how it happens. Now, there's something that is said in network marketing that is so true. The one who stands in front of the room, the one who does the presentation, the one who has the marker makes the most money. And it's so true. So if there's one skill that you want to be able to master is presenting, how to present the products, how to present the opportunity, right? You need to be able to master and literally how to present anything, but start by learning how to present the products and learning how to present the opportunity. It's very important. And second, the reason why you need this skill is because your team needs you to have this skill. Because if your team members begin to grow, they begin to get new members. And let's say the top leaders are not always available to do that presentation. You must be able to help provide that skill. Bring that skill to bear for your team members so that they can refer people to you. So yes, today you are enjoying it. You're sitting back and other people are doing presentation for your team members and for you. But you also need to learn how to do it so that a time will come when your team members need it you can be able to provide it. Don't always be the one who says that, as for me, I'm shy of people. I can't stand in front of people. I'm afraid of crowd. Learn how to overcome that. Learn how to build that skill, and it's going to reward you immensely. Now, number six, follow up. Very powerful. Very, very, <laughs> very necessary. Now, the reason why follow up, the skill of following up is very, very important, is that the majority of people you may talk to the majority of people who attend presentations, the majority of people who you invite who are able to attend events will not sign up immediately after the presentation. You might get lucky, I'll use the word lucky, to get some people who actually will see the presentation and immediately pull out their credit card or pull out money and sign up. However, because people don't usually take immediate decision on some of these things, they go back and there's a lot of things that run through their head and it happens to us we are all human okay and so sometimes we, we may hear something we get so excited um and we probably wanted to take immediate decision on the issue but something happened or we decided okay let me hold on one day let me see let me go and think about, about it about it but when we go we lose the excitement and now we, we don't feel the same way again like when we, we first had it and so it takes a skill which is following up that you have to be able to master that art of following up. You have to know what to say to people when you call them. You have to know, you just don't go say, trade talking about, you know, and um, bring the money. You said you will sign up today. Uh, is your money ready? No, there's a way to go about it. That will get the people back on fire to believe you to be able to go through, um, follow through and make that um, sign up or do that sign up. Okay. Now money is in the follow up. And that's why it's very important for you to learn how to master the skill. What do you say to people when you call them? How often should you call them? How soon should you call them? What should you share with them first? What should you share with them next? These are things you must learn. These are things that are learnable and the experts are using it. So you might be talking to your, oh, have this lady, I've been talking to her every time. She's, she's not serious. Please <laughs> don't be doing that, okay? You just have to become better. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better, all right? And that's the words of Jim Rohn, okay? Now, learn how to handle common objections because this is going to happen in your follow-up. Some, somebody is going to sit in the presentation today, feel very excited, feel like making a decision. Maybe his money is in the bank. So he says he's going to get the money. And then in the, in, on the way, he gets a call from the wife. And the wife asks, um, that there's an issue. Can I want some money? So, oh, I'm going to use this money to sign up. And then the wife raises a question about it. And this thing gets into the guy's head. He's excited, really wants to join, but it's bothering him. Now, if you don't learn the art of handling common objections that people have, that person will meet you and, and raise that as an, as, as an issue, as a, as a problem, or as an objection. We call it in the business, we call it objection. And if you don't know how to respond to that objection, you're going to lose the person, okay? So you have to learn to master some of the common objections that people normally come up with. And they are, they are very few. 
actually are very few. So if you can master them, all right, some of them are, I don't have time, I don't have money. Um, my wife says this, my husband says this, all right, learn those common things and know how to handle them when they come, all right? Is it network marketing? Is it a pyramid scheme? Or is that that thing? Learn how to handle them properly. Don't just go um, speaking um, or being over defensive or whatever it is. Be some em em empathetic and, and actually try to understand them from their level and handle their objection. So these are skills we need, we'll all be learning over time, okay? And then follow through. Follow through is very important. If you say you're gonna send them um, some video in the next minute, follow through, make sure you do it. If you say you are gonna call them in the evening, make sure you call them, okay? That also means you have to be organized, okay? Following through means that you have to be organized so that you'll be able to know exactly when you promise to do something and you follow through to, to do it, all right? Now, skill set number seven, cultivating relationships, okay? And this is about the, the, one of the most important skills you need to be able to learn to build a solid organization with network marketing because network marketing is truly a relationship business, okay? And who are you going to build relationship with? First of all, you need to build relationship with even your team members. There is a problem um, which is very, um, very common in network marketing. And it is that normally when people sign up, after they sign up, now you probably did a lot of work trying to get them to sign up. But immediately they sign up, that's the end. <laughs> no more communication, no more follow up, no more anything. Okay? But as a leader who is trying to build a solid organization, this is one of the things you have to master. And sometimes your conversation does not necessarily have to be about the business. Okay? I'm talking about building normal relationship with your partners, finding out how they're doing, checking up on them from time to time, um, being there for them when there's a funeral, when there's a, a wedding. All those things are part of it because when you do that, it solidifies your relationship with them and it helps them appreciate the partnership that you have, okay? Now, you also need to be able to build a relationship with your customers. Of course, not everybody signs up. You have customers. Some people, they buy products from you, and the next time they are even looking for you to buy from, but they don't, they don't have your number or they misplace your number, and because you are not getting in touch with them, you lose them to somebody else. Personally, I've had so many of those people. Who tell me that I use this product, somebody sold it to me, but I, I don't even remember the person again. I've lost touch with the person. And so they go online to look for somebody else who has the same product, all right? So please learn how to develop relationship. Find meaningful ways or, um, how do I call it? Um, intelligent ways to build communication with your, with your customers from time to time, okay? Not just talk about the product, not just talk about sales, not just talk about signing up, but, you know, little, little conversation you can bring up. Maybe you can share with them a, a, a something, a study, okay? Maybe you can call them from time to time, oh, it's Christmas. How is the family? How are they celebrating? Things like that, send them messages, okay? Don't spam them. <laughs> but really be interested in them to share special moments with them. When is their birthday? Remember them, all right? Now, relationship with your prospect, very important. Because some of you, like I said, we said before, the people you get, when you share the information with them about the business, they might not sign up immediately. Some of them will even outrightly say no to you in the first time. But if you have this ongoing relationship with them, where they get to see you, where they get to hear from you, where they get to see the success you are having, eventually their, heart, their heads will spin and some of them will come back to you and say, ah, that thing that you said, you, you talked to me about, it looks like it's working, eh? Can I still start? And you'll be shocked how many of those people who said no before will come back to you and, and express interest and actually sign up to the business. So this is really very important because sometimes um, you can exhaust your list. You can exhaust uh, the people you have, you have on your contact list, even if you have a thousand. So if you call all of them, it will get to a point that thousand will finish. So you have to find strategic ways of actually getting new relationships, building new relationships with people. You meet people every day. Find strategic ways, find um, intelligent ways to start having contact with them, having relationship with them. And that way you will never run out of contacts or people to talk to about your business. And that is what the professionals do, okay? The little show of care matters. 
the little show is your birthday say something they rank advance celebrate them call them be excited for them put their picture uh on your facebook wall you know do those it, it seems little or oh, what is it she knows she, i mean some of them will even tell you that i don't want to be celebrated but at least you can do it on a personal level all right and that means a lot to them all right number eight the art of selling <laughs> very 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 important okay and for me um i've i've learned to stop telling people that network marketing does not involve selling it's not true it's not true especially if you are doing in mary which involves products all right you need to learn how to sell as a skill so if you don't know how to sell don't worry put it as part of your goals you have to have goals and you have to learn how to sell one of them because you don't have it because if you know how to sell you can actually build a massive organization in fact you will not have problems at all sometimes when you you sign up um and your you get products you know you can use the product strategically to even build your organization if you know how to sell so selling involves persuasive 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 speaking okay all right and that's an art you need to learn how to do that there are books about that all right there are, there are trainings about that the art of closing and this is even important when you meet when you have this skill even in your presentation you can use it so people are listening to something that sounds like this um slice or, or their, their statistics but if you use these strategies or use the skills that you have by the time you end a presentation people are running to go and take forms to sign up or pulling out their cards to do an immediate purchase or or sign up okay so this is very important it's not branding absolutely important some of you don't look like opportunity even on your social media <laughs> you look like you are struggling and yet you are promising people that they can join you and make a lot of money you don't look happy you don't look like you are you have a direction you don't look like you have anything meaningful to offer and yet you don't understand why you are not succeeding why people are not joining you but they are joining other people personal branding all right very important learn art make a note of that and find books and things that will help you understand what it means and start doing it team branding also very important you can position your team in a way that you become so attractive to everybody outside there so that when they think in mary they think about your team <laughs> if you can do that you can reach so far you will get people from all over people that will be contacting you that you have no idea of you have no relationship with but they are interested in joining you because they see they see a team brand that they want to be part of all right and then finally online and offline marketing in this era if your business is not online you are not in business if all you can think about is going door to door or going to the market or whatever is if that's all that you are thinking about then you are building a very slow organization okay look at ways you can put yourself online okay there's online marketing mastery there are things social media marketing and um, facebook marketing um whatever whatever there are so many tools out there that can help you position your brand position your product position yourself and market to people that we call cold market and like i told you those people are likely the people who are going to actually take you to the dream destination not the family and friends the family and friends you can exhaust them but the offline the online code markets are actually the people that will come and build the organization so master that art number nine coaching and mentoring now this is where you you can now teach after you've mastered the beginning the the basics you can now teach it because it's important to, for you to be able to teach other people how to do what you know how to do if you alone know how to do the things we have talked about if you know you are the only person in your team that knows how to present if you are the only person in your team that knows how to sell if you are the only person in your team that knows how to prospect 
if you're another person, you notice that it will be the only person actually signing up people. And everybody will be watching you just blinking their eye. Hey. <laughs> And that's bad for your organization, okay? So you have to learn how to not just master it for yourself, but also to be able to teach it. And you cannot be a good coach without first being a good student. So all great coaches, all great team leaders are students, great students. They love to learn from others. They themselves are being mentored. They themselves read books. They do the things that they expect their followers to do. And when they use that, and they practice it, and they follow the proven success, then they're able to teach you well. Otherwise, you hear people, and I've had that experience before, where we had people telling us, oh, prospect, invite, follow up, but they, they do. <laughs> and you, you do what you think you know prospecting and inviting means, you are not getting success, and they tell you that you should just do more. They have nothing to offer you. They are not, they, they are not teaching you what it takes. They need to teach you the how, like we learned from last week. Okay, so this is very important. Provide a learning platform for your team. Okay, if you don't have that, and I love what is already happening in Mary, so many leaders, amazing mentors and coaches, setting up platforms all over the place to groom people, give information, train people, bring them to that mindset of entrepreneurs. Right? It's happening. So plug yourself in and do that for your team also if you don't have it. Identify the fire brands and work closely with them. That's very important. Okay. This is very, very key. If you want to build a thriving organization, look deep into your team. Who are those working? Sometimes they don't have support. They are in some obscure corner. Nobody is giving them any attention. Maybe their upline is not even active. But they are in your team. Identify those people and get to work with them. Get to provide them with the support. Get to provide them with the leadership. Get to provide them with the strategies. Get to work with them closely. And you'll be amazed the kind of people that will start emerging in your organization. Right? Sometimes your frontliners, your first, um, your direct signups are not the people who are actually going to build the organization. So you need to learn to do this. All right? And that is your role. Number 10 and final one, team leading and management. You need to learn how to lead a team. Some of us are very good when it comes to personal one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, we know how to do that very well, but we don't know how to manage a team. It's a skill. <laughs> it's a skill. All right? And this is it. So use appropriate tools to help you communicate and provide support effectively. So there are so many platforms. There are so many apps. There are so many tools that you can now use. There's WhatsApp um, that allows us to have like 250-something people in a group. And you should have that for your team. We learned that last week. Break into small units where you can actually provide maximum support to your people. All right? Now, be a source of inspiration as a team leader. You can't just be saying and not doing. Okay? You have to be the inspiration. Show the way and lead by example. What you tell people to do, let them see you doing it. All right? And that's going to help other people know that okay is doable and they also follow through sometimes you have to keep doing it keep doing it alone until it catches fire right promote a healthy team culture promote things that will build towards the future of your business don't introduce your team to sabotaging tactics and things that eventually will hurt them right so promote a healthy team culture what is the culture of your team are they really building the business with real people? Or they are just promoting the business and investment scheme? Promote the healthy team culture. Are they orienting their new members? Are they getting the new members to get into their back office once they sign up? Or they just register them and they leave them? Promote the healthy team culture. Are they adding the people to the team platforms? OK? So teach that. Be a unifier and resolve team conflicts. Very important. When there's a problem in the team, maybe one party is fighting with another party. As a team leader, you don't go side with one, one side. Find a middle way and get them to, you know, forgive each other or whatever it is and bring peace. <laughs> 
right? It doesn't matter whether they are the other parties, your family member or your friend. They are all part of your team and you are one family. You have to learn to be like a father to all of them. Identify and develop more leaders. And that's going to be your key because you cannot carry everybody. So you need to be able to develop leaders so that they help with the work. You probably can inspire a few people, but those people can also inspire other few people. And if you develop the right quality leaders among them, the work becomes so easy. And that's what Eric Worry said in his book, GoPro. He said, network marketing is actually about getting a lot of people to consistently do little things. <laughs> All right? Small, small things. Everybody, you have a large team, but everybody is just doing something small. Maybe they are just buying one product every month, but that can build up to massive repurchase points. Maybe they are just signing one person, but that could accumulate to take you all the way to the top. But learn to be the inspiration, learn to develop the leaders so that everybody can benefit. So let's recap, we are done, okay? So these are the skills, the 10 skills we have talked about. Number one, goal setting. Number two, self-discipline. Number three, prospecting, inviting. I hope you are writing them. Presenting, very important. Follow up, that's where the money is. Cultivating relationship, that's how you never end or come to an end of a list. You always have new people to talk to. You can never say, I don't, I, I've run out of people to talk to. The art of selling, very important. Selling is key, okay? coaching and mentoring, and finally team leading and management. All right, so this, in my view, are the 10 skills we need. Now, to sum it up, how to learn, how do we learn and master these skills? How do we do it? How do we do it? These are a few things for you. First, set personal development goals. Identify the skills you lack and go to work on them. Personally, one of the things I had an issue with initially was Following up, I've struggled with that for several um, of, uh, I mean, months or years. I had an issue because my way of doing my corporate work, you know, my following up tactics was different. You send a document for verification. You just wait to make a call. You sit down and wait to make a call. These are human beings. <laughs> you need to find ways to do the follow up. So you have to learn the skill. So if you lack the skill, set a goal to learn it. So what are some of the personal development goals you, you want to have or the, some of the skills you want to be able to develop personally, All right? Is it selling? Is it following up? Is it how to find new people to join your business? Is it how to present? Is it how to stand in front of a crowd? What skills? Set a goal for it because once you set a goal, you have a direction. Now observe, very important. Observe how the successful people are doing it. Be very observant, be observe the leaders. Watch how they do it. Sometimes you just have to attend, some of you will attend maybe BOP, Business Opportunity Brand, once. And because you know, you know what they have said, you don't want to attend anymore again. So when there are business opportunity presentations going on, you don't join. But for you, you probably need to join because you will get to learn how they say their things. Because it's not what they are saying that, what they are saying that's important, but how they are saying it. So you listen to Reverend Sekwe, you see he has a way of talking. You listen to Alberta Kuhn, he has a way of saying this. You listen to somebody like um, uh, Madam Mensa, Mrs. Mensa. Strategy, they have tight, little, little things they say differently that really catches on. That makes people want to learn. That makes people want to sign up. That makes people want to, want to buy products, all right? So observe, very important. Three, ask. <laughs> this is key. If you don't know, ask. Don't presume. Don't presume. Don't go doing trial and error. There's already a proven way. So you ask. If you are doing something that's not working, go and ask. You are trying to do Facebook or, 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 so, uh, or WhatsApp, and people are watching and they are not responding. Find out from those who are doing it well. Maybe you are doing the right thing, but you need to be patient. Maybe you're also doing it totally wrong. If you ask, you learn. Read books. 
watch videos, attend trainings, okay? And like I told you, some of the things I've, I've picked up are actually from books, okay? So it's very important. There are books about every skill you want to learn. If you set the goal for it, you can find a book. If you don't have a goal, you won't look for anything, right? Attend events like this one. Make it a goal for you to build your team or promote events for your team so that as you don't become the only person who knows all these things. Teach your team to attend events. Get a personal mentor or coach, very important. Because sometimes you may feel you are doing the right thing, but you are probably off track. And you will need somebody to watch over your shoulder to help you, direct you. You know, to watch what you are doing and tell you, hey, if you do it this way, you will achieve better results. If you, if you think you know it all, you might, you might, it might take you a very long time and you might end up realizing that you've actually wasted many years. All right? And finally, practice, practice, practice. That is the key to actually imbibing the things you've learned. Just hearing them is not enough. Just reading is not enough. You might fill your head with head knowledge. It's not enough. But the actual skill is truly developed when you put it to practice. You might start and start making mistakes. When you start, you'll be afraid. When you start, you'll be unconfident, uncomfortable. You, you feel like quitting. But if you keep doing it, if you keep doing it, it will get to a point where you master it and it becomes your second nature. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what brings me to the end of the presentation. And in my closing statement, this is what I have to say. And this is by Eric Worre. If you're going to be involved in network marketing, decide to be a professional. Decide to go pro. Don't just sit on the fence and think you don't know how to do it. Other people know how to do it. It's a profession. Master the art. Decide to be a professional and everything will begin to change for you. Thank you very much and God richly bless you. I think at this point, I'm going to hand over to my host, Jessica Natigan. And I don't know if there are any questions. I'll stand by. God bless you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chidi Choli. This was awesome. Very great presentation. And I must say, I'm out. And I know that our listeners or audience are also um, have also learned a lot from this presentation. Please, if you have any question, if you have any contribution, like I've already seen in the comment session, please feel free to drop them. And Mr. Chidi is able to see everything. So just drop them. He, he will see them and the ones that we are supposed to answer, we would answer. But then we have one young lady to do the closing, to give us a closing remarks. And she is from Nigeria, a manager. And I know that she's very popular there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know her well. So if Madam Sylvia is on, please unmute your microphone. Let me say hello to you. Hello, Madam Sylvia. Okay, so whilst we wait for Madam Sylvia, I'd like to go through this quick announcement with you. So as you can see on the screen, please, can you all see my screen? Okay, so we have another training coming up. Someone is saying something here. Please, just a minute. Okay. All right. Yes, so we have another training coming up. And our speaker is, is from China. So <laughs> you can imagine, you know, our headquarters is in China and Malaysia, right? So we have um, a health practitioner coming from there to also talk about our ad. Well, we first did for Virgin, we did for um, Vita recently with Dr. Khan and Michelle Pang. And now we have um, our, another speaker to do the ad well for us. So please, if you want to know more about it, the in depth of it, please join us on 22nd of August. It's a Saturday. Um, that's next week, Saturday, 22nd of August, 2020. And please, in Ghana, it's 12 p.m., Nigeria, 1 p.m., Egypt, 2 p.m., and um, 8 p.m. for um, China, I think, Taiwan, Malaysia, and PH, that's Philippines. So please do not miss out on this presentation. We also have the most awaited. <laughs> That is Ali Hat and Femetima. We have it coming up on 27th, which is um, um, next, I think it's on Thursday. Yes. 
yes so please watch out for this one. it's going to be live online so please don't miss out we've already heard um dr khan and michelle pang talk about it and we have a fair idea on what this product is about but the official launching is on the 27th of august 2020 please do not miss i know you're all excited so please let's make this a success you can you can share this um image with your prospects anyone at all to also join us on 27 it's going to be amazing it's going to be awesome i know the things you know you marry already right we always we always bring you top-notch um stuff so please do watch out for this one and also to remind you please we have um our bops on monday wednesdays and fridays this is because every new member is supposed to join this presentation to be able to understand what we do here in Emery. If you have any new person you've talked to, you've spoken to for some time, please let them join this presentation. And if you are a new member, you maybe you join just for the first time, we decided to make it three times in a week because you are supposed to sit in to be able to grab the whole business idea. Please you understand because um, ours is very unique and you can't sit in just a presentation. Some, of course, they've sat in one presentation, got to understand everything, but on a regular, you have to sit through to be able to learn everything, hear from different speakers, so that you can also have different ideas for your new business partners. And we also have the members orientation program every Thursday. This program is designed for only distributors, only members. If you're a new member and you join the MOP, you might not be able to understand some terms because this is designed for members only. So we get to tell them, teach them about how they can grow through their business after they've joined. So please do not miss out on that also. And every Friday, we also have Spotlight coming up. We did one just yesterday with Mr. Brian Lewis and it was great, it was awesome. Those who joined, you can testify to it. And we have another special edition coming up on Friday. Please do not miss out. Whenever you want to know about something, like I always say, visit our Facebook page. It's in Mary Global, in Mary Nigeria. If you want to know anything that is going to happen in Africa region, I mean, um, whether whether in Nigeria, whether in Ghana, in Egypt, ever, anything at all, please do also visit our Facebook page. We always update it. We always put everything, every event you're about to do on there. So please do not miss out. Now I've come to the end of my uh, announcement. So Madam Sylvia, please, if you are ready, is she on? You can unmute your microphone, please. Okay, so hello, Madam Sylvia. Yes, yeah, she's on. Okay, let me help. Okay, let me unmute. Hello, Madam Sylvia. I'm on now. I'm on. Please, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very clear. Very clear. Can you hear me, please? Please, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? I see you on, but then I can't hear you. I don't know if any other person can hear. I can hear you. Okay, so you can hear. Okay, all right, so please go ahead. All right, so thank you so much, um, DJ Tolly. I really enjoyed the presentation. I really enjoyed it, truly, because most times when we call for presentation like this, or when we call for trainings like this, people don't tend to show up. But they don't know that um, all these things that we give out to people are actually valuable trainings that you can even use um, in your own personal development or your own businesses, you get. So I've actually learned a lot today and I, one thing I learned today is that you have to have an entrepreneurial mindset to run your MLM business. If you don't have that mindset, I'm telling you that you will go nowhere. Yeah. So I really appreciate Emery Corporates for bringing this training together. I appreciate everybody on this call, all the great leaders. You see, one time, one thing I tell people is you don't need to, uh, sometimes I, I, I live, there's this particular quote I heard. They said, never let your ego be bigger than your bank account. Yeah. Never let your ego be bigger than your bank account. Now, whenever trainings like these are thrown to us as leaders, we know these things. 
we already know it, but it's more like motivation. And we need motivation every day. In as much as we know these things, we need it as we take our baths every day. That is the way we need motivation. And we need this motivation so that we can improve our capability, help to inspire our teams, and also help, also help us to achieve our standing business results. Because if we don't do this, there's no way we can actually create value and create efficiency in our um, empl employees. Because basically, people who I, who I see my, as my teammates, I see them as my employees. I see them as my employees. That's the truth. So I need to make sure I give them these trainings. Anytime there's a training like this, I post, I scatter it everywhere in my groups. Please attend. Because as they are coming on board, I know that they're going to get valuable um, 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 value and then it will transcend to my team explosion. Thank you so much, Emery. Thank you so much. I love this company so well. And um, I, I, in fact, anytime I have the chance, I must attend the training. It's a must. So I see about one and 12 leaders in this call. In fact, amazing leaders. In Mary, eh, we are too much. If we continue mm. with the process, eh, nobody, no, no, no company is going to see our back because we are getting the best of the best on board in our business and we are not stopping we are moving to the diamond so we are going diamond go diamond thank you so much thank you so much go diamond <laughs> thank wow. you so much thank you so much madam sylvia that was a quick one okay so i see most of the comments um as encouragement to mr chidi Cholly. Thank you so much, Mr. Chidi. Charlie, I'm not seeing any question. Yeah, there's one up. Okay, so there is one question up. Mr. Chidi is going to um, answer that. Please, you can go ahead. Okay, so. Um, all right, so. All right, so one of the great books that I will personally recommend everybody to have is this book, okay, by Eric Worre called GoPro. It should be the manual for network marketing, right? Now, beyond this, there are a lot of other books, okay? There are books by John C. Maxwell um, on leadership. There are books by Brian Tracy um, on sales and marketing. You need to listen to people like Jim Rohn, who are personal development coaches. I mean, there are so many, so many, so many books and, and, and topics out there to learn. All you need to do is set your personal development goal. I've showed you um, 10 of them, 10 skills that you need to master. I'm telling you, if you go online or even ask your team leaders to give you some books relating to any of these topics, they will have so much to offer. And I'm sure those of you on um, different team platforms, um, some of these books have been shared with you learn them if you don't set the goal you will not get it all right now somebody asked if the recording has been done um yes the recording is done um hopefully we'll be able to provide it um on our high growth university website all right so that is going to be there um literally i think that's it. somebody asked me to give an example of a follow-up or uh, something about following up say please tell us how you learn the follow-up skill you lack um so Again, all the things I've shared, okay, so I think that goes to the, the last slide I shared about how do we learn it, okay? One, by observation, okay? Two, uh, in fact, one, by setting the goal first, identifying that you have that, you need that skill, okay? Some of you need public speaking skills. You are afraid of standing in front of people. You always want to be behind. You need to learn to overcome that fear, okay? Some of you lack selling skills. Some of you lack leadership skills. You have people, you know a lot of people, but you are not able to get them to do the things that you are doing. You need to learn it, all right? And those are some of the things that um, you can do. So personally, that's what I did. But let me give you a quick tip on one of the things that just, uh, this is a bonus, okay? What you can do to follow up with 
prospects who are probably not making up their minds. All you need is their WhatsApp status, their WhatsApp number. And I have a strategy I call drip on them. Drip on them. So what you do is make sure that from time to time you are giving them update. Don't, don't put them in a group. <laughs> that doesn't work. You can even use a broadcast, okay? You know how to do that, broadcast. And from time to time, just send them success stories, testimonies. Update your status. They will see it. It's once they see little by little, little by little, one day, maybe whatever was hindering them from joining would have been taken away. Maybe they have not gotten to that tight corner where they need some serious money. Maybe they have not gotten to that place where they realize that what they are doing probably need to do something else in order to be able to achieve other goals that they have. And when you show them those little, little things from time to time, it might take them a month, it might take them six months, it might take them a year, but tell you what, they will contact you one day, all right? And personally, I've been doing that and I'm seeing some amazing success with that. So thank you very much. I hope you found value in this. God bless you. you. When you is out, out, I hope you can share with your members. All the best. Oh. The best. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Chedi Charlie, for doing this for us. We are much grateful. Thank you so much, Madam Sylvia, from all the way from Nigeria. I really appreciate. We all really appreciate it. And thank you so much for the quick closing remarks you gave us. And I would like to say a big thank you to all our leaders who joined us today. I see Mr. Aris Musaso. That's our sales manager for Emery Africa. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. I see um, Madam Michelle De La Cruz. She's also here in Ghana. Thank you so much for joining us. I see Michelle. I see um, Mr. Jonas. I see, oh, most of the leaders are in. <laughs> wow. Most, Payama Plus, shout out to you. I see a lot of Mr. Brian Louise. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for yesterday also. Thank you all. I would like to say a big thank you to all our audience, everyone who took time to join us today. We, we, we are really grateful. You made this a success. And we would like to say thank you so much for joining us today. And make sure that you take note of everything that was discussed here. And on that note, we say we are going diamond. And also stay happy, stay simple. My name is Jessica Nat Egan. See you on another great edition of our leadership training. Bye. Bye. All of us, see you next week.